Sutra. From such confused causes, the cause of confusion perpetuates itself. When one realizes that confusion has no cause, the falseness becomes baseless. Since it never arose, why would you hope for its extinction? One who obtains body is like a person who awakens to realize the events of a dream. Even though his mind is awake and clear, he cannot get hold of the things in the dream and physically display them. Commentary From such confused causes, the cause of confusion perpetuates itself. You encounter confusion and it seems to really exist. The false thinking appears to be real enough, but actually it is phony. You seem to have false thinking, but actually the confusion doesn't have a substantial nature. Thus, you can't say that confusion gives rise to confusion, because confusion doesn't have any substance of its own. When one realizes that confusion has no cause, that there is nothing for confusion to rely on, that it has no seed, no root, the falseness becomes baseless. Once you realize that confusion hasn't any substance, how can the false remain? Since it never arose, it has no way to come into being. The person who said he didn't have a head thought he didn't have one, but it was really growing right there on his shoulders. Confusion is a temporary lack of clarity. It's not that your confusion completely obliterates your enlightened nature. Why would you hope for its extinction? If it doesn't arise, how can you say it is destroyed? One who obtains bodies like a person who awakens to realize the events of a dream. When he was asleep, he was the emperor, had a whole parcel of advisors, ate fine foods, and was richly dressed. And everything he did reaped immeasurable blessings. Even though his mind is awake and clear, he cannot get hold of the things in the dream and physically display them. Could he bring out the events of the dream and show them to people? No. Who is the person whose mind is awake and clear? Is the Buddha. The Buddha can speak Dharma to point out that you experience all kinds of states in a dream, but he can't take the states from the dream and display them for you in actuality. Although the Buddha speaks Dharma to destroy confusion and falseness, and falseness. Nevertheless, he can't physically get hold of false thoughts and confusion and show them to you. All he can do is use analogies to instruct you. Don't expect him to pull out the actual things as proof. So he's like the person who awakens from a dream and can talk about all the things that happened, but he can't pull out the actual things of the dream and show them to you. Sutra how much the more is that the case with something which is without a cause and basically non-existent, such as the Yanadatta's situation that day in the city? Was there any reason why he became fearful, bore his head and went running about? If his madness was suddenly to cease, it would not be that he had obtained his head from some place outside. And so, before his madness ceases, how can his head have been lost? Commentary How much the more is that the case with something which is without a cause? Since you can't display the thing you saw in a dream to prove to others that you saw them, how much the more impossible would it be to prove the existence of something that has no cause, no root? and no cause and that is basically non-existent. Confusion certainly has no substance or appearance. There isn't anything there at all. It is like Yanadatta's situation that day in the city. Was there any reason why he became fearful for his head and went running about? Was there really any reason why he got frightened and began to question the existence of his own head? His doubt was this. He said he couldn't see his own head and 
concluded that he didn't have a head. He saw a head in the mirror, but didn't realize that it was his own. He thought it existed independent of him there in the mirror. So he scolded himself for not having a head and called himself a headless freak. And that's why he began running around. If his madness were suddenly to cease, it would not be that he had obtained his head from some place outside. His craziness might stop, but it isn't that his head has returned from somewhere else. This represents the fact that although we have given rise to confusion, confusion has no nature of its own. It has no substance or appearance. Although the true suchness of the self-nature may become confused, it is never lost. And when there is no confusion, it is in the case that one has obtained the true suchness of the self-nature. In the same way, one's head is one's own all along. It's not the case that one can obtain a head or lose a head. And so, before his madness ceases, how can his head have been lost? When Janadatta lost his head, where did it go? That's the topic for today. If you know where it went, then you understand a certain amount of this sutra. If you don't know where it went, you should listen attentively to the sutra right now. And you will understand. Even before his madness ceases, then has he has has he in fact lost his head, or hasn't he? Is it really gone? Sutra, Purna, falseness is the same way. How can it exist? Commentary: The head didn't actually go anywhere. It wasn't lost. The only reason he thought he didn't have a head is that he got confused. Purna, falseness is the same way. How can it exist? Where is the root of falseness? It doesn't have any support or any foundation. Without a root, then, where do you suppose confusion and falseness really are? You can't fight them. Sutra. All you need to do is not follow discriminations, because none of the three causes arises when the three conditions of the three continuities of the world. Living beings and karmic retribution are cut off. Commentary: All you need to do, you don't have to use any other method. Is not follow the discriminations of the false thinking, because none of the three causes arises when the three conditions of the three continuities of the world, living beings and karmic retribution, are cut off. If you don't give rise to discriminations. Then there is no wound. There are no living beings. And there is no karmic retribution. The three conditions are cut off. These three continuities existed in the first place because of your false consciousness and discriminating mind. When the conditions are cut off, the causes do not arise. So, trap. Then the madness of the janadatta in your mind. Will cease of itself, and just that ceasing is body. The supreme, pure, bright mind originally pervades the Dharma realm. It is not something obtained from anyone else. Why then labor and toil with marrow enjoyed to cultivate and be certified? Commentary: Then the madness of the jnana data in your mind. Your mad mind will cease of itself. Your confusion will quiet itself, and just that ceasing is body. It's not the case that once it ceases, it can start up again. The ceasing itself is body. Simply getting getting rid of the confusion is the true. It's not that after the confusion is gone, there is the true. Rather, once you understand in the midst of your confusion, the truth reveals itself. There are not two things. Your understanding is true, and your lack of understanding is confusion. The confusion basically has no foundation, and if you can stop it, that ceasing is itself body, the enlightened nature. The supreme, pure, bright mind, which is incomparable and undefined, with a light that shines everywhere, originally pervades the Dharma realm. It is not something obtained from anyone else. 
that is it didn't come from someplace external it is something inherent in every person the true mind the supreme pure bright mind is not greater than the buddha's case even by a little bit nor is it even a little bit smaller in the case of living beings although it is in the midst of confusion the supreme pure bright mind is innate in everyone no one likes it it is not something borrowed from someone else or attained some from some external place. Why then labor and toil with marrow and joy to cultivate and be certified? An example of labor and toil is that of parents for their children. They nourish the baby, change its diapers, and do everything in their power to display their kindness and concern for it. By the same token, you don't need to treat your self-nature like a baby and labor and toy when its behalf, on its behalf because the self-nature is inherent in you. You don't have to care for, with, for it with the toy of marrow and point. The butcher pounding in trances Yang Shen Chu was so powerful that he could decapitate the cow without exerting his marrow and joys. He could cut through with a single swipe. The meaning of marrow and joys here in the taste is that you don't have to calculate and formulate a plan for how you are going to cultivate and become certified. There is no cultivation of this drama and no certification to it. One cultivates as if not cultivating and is certified as if there is no certification. This is the effortless way, and the fine points of it are perfectly fused and unobstructed. You don't have to cultivate and be certified, didn't Ananda say earlier, so that I needn't pass through countless errands to attain the Dharma body. He doesn't have to go through three great Asangriya compass to attain the Dharma body. The wonderful Dharma of the Suragama Sutra is just in this. It is not necessary to labor and toil in marrow and joy to cultivate and be certified. So try this is to be like the person who has a wish of fulfilling her soul in his clothing without realizing it. Thus he runs abroad in a state of poverty, begging for food and always on the move. Although he is indeed destitute, the poem is never lost. Commentary If the Yanadatta within you, your mad mind ceases. If you, your false thinking, your perpetual state of confusion and lack of enlightenment disappears, then Bodhi appears. But the appearance of Bodhi is not something that is obtained from outside, nor is there any need to nourish it in yourself. It is something we have all along. The Buddha now gives Pona another example. This is to be like the person who has a wish of fulfilling power soon in his clothing without realizing it. The wish of fulfilling, uh, fulfilling power makes whatever wish you might have come true. The first hand and eye in the great compassion Dharma is the hand and eye of the wish of fulfilling power. If you want gold, you can have gold. If you want silver, you can have silver. Anything at all can manifest from the wish fulfilling pearl. Someone who has a wish fulfilling pearl is the wealthiest person in the on earth because it can never be used up. You can have whatever wealth and riches come to your mind. The person in the Buddha's example has a wish fulfilling pearl sewn in his uh, clothing without realizing it. Maybe he wants new, but with the passage of time, he has forgotten about it. He's probably a very forgetful person and doesn't even remember such an important matter as this. Thus he runs abroad in a state of poverty. He's penniless, so destitute that he has hardly any clothes to wear. Perhaps he doesn't have a house and has to sleep along the road. By this, I don't mean that he's like people who get together, go camping out in the open. They 
do that for fun. This person is so poor that he has no choice. He must beg for food and he's always on the move. He ends up a beggar. Also, he is indeed destitute. The poem is never lost. Although the fact that uh, of his poverty is real, he has still not lost his wish of fulfilling poem. This shows that although we people are in a state of confusion, our self nature is not lost. One may be confused like understanding and not study the Buddha Dharma. Still, the self nature is not lost. Those greedy for worldly riches and honor for entertainment and pleasure don't realize that these mundane attainments are not genuine riches and honor. The poorest people are those who do not recognize a genuine principle. They are those who do not understand the Buddha Dharma. Since you don't understand the Buddha Dharma, you don't realize that your self-nature is like the hidden wish fulfilling pearl. But even when you don't understand your self-nature, still the nature of the treasury of the first common, the supreme pure bright mind, is certainly not lost. It is still inherently yours. Those who cultivate and believe in the Buddha Dharma understand that their self-nature is inherent within them, and they come to discover their innate wealth that is genuine riches and honor. Sutra Suddenly a wise person shows him the poem, all he wishes are fulfilled, he obtains great wealth, and he realizes that the poem did not come from somewhere outside. Commentary Suddenly a wise person shows him the poem. The wise person is analogous to the Buddha. Showing him the poem in his clothing represents pointing out to him his inherent Buddha nature. All his wishes are fulfilled when he obtains a wish-fulfilling poem. He can have whatever he wants and he obtains great wealth. He becomes an elder with great blessings. He has so much money that he can count it all even with the help of accountants. The great wealth represents one's understanding of one's inherent self-nature and one's being certified as having attained the enlightened fruition of body. He realizes that the poem did not come from somewhere outside. He understands that the spiritual poem, the wish fulfilling poem, is not obtained from outside. This means that he knows that his inherent Buddha nature is not obtained from outside himself. When you can accomplish Buddhahood, you will know. And you'll say, oh, so that's what it's all about. When you become enlightened, you will know that basically you were an enlightened person all along. You'll think, if I'd realized this earlier, I wouldn't have had put forth so much effort. I wouldn't have had to go outside begging for food. I wouldn't have had to endure such poverty. But you haven't had a wise person to instruct you, and you yourself have already forgotten. So as we listen to instruction on the Suragama Sutra, each of us should discover the wish fulfilling pearl in his or her clothing. If you uncover your wish fulfilling pearl, you will become the most wealthy person in the world. Another definition of genuine wealth is this the mind stopping and thought seizing. That is true wealth and honor. Selfish desires cut off completely. That is the true field of blessing. If your false thinking mind stops, if your crazy thoughts disappear, then you have attained genuine wealth and honor. So when you obtain the wish fulfilling pearl, you won't have any more greed because you will already have everything. Everything will be yours and if you have no selfishness, no thoughts of design, then you are a person who is a genuine field of blessings.